Today's run review, I'm going to be talking about Chairman's Reserve, the forgotten casks. Can you see that? And it, it's quite apparent because, uh, or quite adapt, I should say, because I've forgotten about this. I've had this a couple of months now and not even cracked the bottle. Um, I tasted it properly for the first time at the Chairman's Reserve Mai Tai competition in London. I was like, wow, that's really good. Um, and got a bottle straight afterwards, and it's been sitting on my shelves ever since. And I thought, well, let's, let's sort of semi-kick off these rum tasting reviews with this. Chairman's Reserve is a brand that I love. Uh, St. Lucian, uh, kind of that typical English style, but they've kind of, there's a lot of nuances, a lot of uh, different technicalities how they differ from uh, Jamaica, from Barbados, from Guyana to like to, you know, do not think they are very similar in to Barbados rums. They have their own unique taste and profile. Um, Solution Distillers, you may be able to see a few different bottles behind me. Bounty is their entry range, if you like. Uh, Chairman's Reserve is their kind of mid-range, although they do have some expensive Chairman's Reserves, like the 1931 uh, £100 bowl, give or take. Um, so, they, you know, Chairman's Reserve, don't think of it as just solely mid-level. Uh, and then they have Admiral Rodney, which, again, actually is, is a couple around about the 50s. Uh, 50 pound mark in the uk but then you know 60s 70s 80s so you know it's a little bit of overlap but that's how i would put them bounty entry chairman's reserve mid admiral rodney and the next level up but, but you have got more expensive chairman's reserves if you like so the forgotten casks what is the forgotten cast this is what a lot of people missed about this and this was again evident in my own discord community as well because people just naturally assumed and jumped on this whole thing. You know, oh, it's just marketing. Chairman's Reserve never, ever said that these were limited edition. It's all marketing. It's all very clever wording. You just have to... Re I'm fortunate. I've been in this industry a long time. I can read between the lines with marketing. You know, this was never a limited edition. This was always... Basically, what happened, there was a fire 2007. 2007, there was a fire... Um, so the Sellerman, or whatever you want to call warehouse manager, kind of moved barrels around uh, the distillery to store them in safe places, but basically forgot about a load of barrels or, or forgot, you know, different places. Found, they found weird and wonderful places to hide them, but they kind of forgot about them. And it wasn't until years later that they kind of found these barrels and thought, ooh, what are they? Of course, the barrels are labelled up. You know, it's not kind of, oh, I don't know what's in this barrel. And that's what I think people missed. You know, you're never going to not have a barrel that you don't know what's in it. Uh, I think that's where certain people's heads went. They kind of assumed, oh, this is a mysterious random barrel. Of course not. Of course it isn't. You know, everyone, every distillery is going to have to label up what they're... Uh, what is in that. So they knew exactly what was in these barrels. The fact is that these were barrels were just slightly too old to go into a normal bottlings, whether it be Admiral Rodney, whether it be Chairman's Reserve, it couldn't go into the original because they were too old. It couldn't go into the Legacy because, again, it was too old. So what they decided to do was blend these rums into a new bottle, which is the Forgotten Casks. And then when this started to reappear, again, like an ongoing thing, but this is where people kind of got confused well as i said it was never a limited edition it was purely a blend of eight and 11 year old rums which they can quite easily replicate time and time and time again they just need to age rums between eight and 11 years old so this is what this is this is what the nod is um this is i have got the technical things here it's a combination right because chairman's I, the reason why i love chairman's reserve they're very uh, they've got some good stuff about their stills. They use four different stills. I think it's four that I know of. Yeah, I'm sure it's four. Um, but what we've got... What's the other one? I've got... Because I've got this three different stills in this one. We've got John Dor. Oh, yeah, sorry. Of course, two John Dors. <laughs> uh, and then the two the two columns. From the, I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's right. Uh, so we've got John Dor, uh, number two, is a pot still, which is a 6,000 litre still. Uh, in there we've got column the coffee with the lower plates in if you kind of understand i need to do videos we'll get onto that on my main channel um of kind of like how column stills work in different plates and, and all that kind of stuff but they've got their column coffee still with the lower plate so distilled produced rum they've got their column i think it's the vendome the column um coffee still with 
the higher plate in. So again, that produces a different type of rum. So they've got all those different types of rums in there. Uh, and they've been, as I say, aged 8 to 11 years old to kind of make this. So please do not think that this was is very clever marketing, but there was never any kind of, uh, for those that took it at face value, there was never any kind of thing that was alluded to that this was going to be like a one-off limited edition. Of course it's not. If you know what rum is in the barrel, you can easily replicate it no matter how old it is. And that's what they have done. So this is that. 40% uh, ABV, £42 UK a bottle. So quite nicely under the £50. So on the uh, on the old uh, nostrils, what we get, and I love this because I get this is very different to the legacy. Very, I think it's behind my head. Very, very different to the old legacy, this one. Um, I haven't got, I don't know what rums are in the legacy actually. It's slightly older, I'm assuming, in the forgotten cast than what's in the legacy. But yeah, this. I get, I get, I do get that. Vanilla. I've got vanilla on the brain today, but I do get the vanilla. But I get uh, soft dried fruit, raisins, plump sort of raisins, chocolate on there. Uh, I'm just looking at the other sort of things. So this is, I think this is their official uh, notes of what they pu publish out there. Rich, dark, gold mahogany colour. Okay, so we we failed on that bit. Can we see the white on there at all? Let's put the lights on as well. We haven't done that, have we? I keep forgetting to put the lights on behind me. Here we go. Let's do that. So, can you see that? So we've got a rich, dark mahogany colour with an intense nose of sweet raisins, cigar tobacco, amber honey, and vanilla. Okay, vanilla. Definitely agree with uh, those. Cigar tobacco. C cigar tobacco is not one I'm au fait with. I've got uh, a, a, a rum aroma kit. Uh, I'm kind of trying to get myself used to that sort of smell, but I don't pick it up in this. Um, a warm, oh, let's go on to the palate. So that's the nostrils. Uh, so sweet raisins, cigar tobacco, amber and honey. Amber and honey, definitely. Or amber honey, I should say. Kind of a lighter honey, definitely agree with that. It smells so inviting. Everything I want in an aged sipping rum is how that smells. Delicious. Right, let's get on to this. A little bit of a tingle, actually, and forty percent. It's a little bit of a. I would say that's a very strong forty percent. If I was, if I was tasting that blind, I would, I would put that a lot stronger than forty. Not, I'd, I'd potentially go up to forty six, but I would certainly think that was at least forty four to forty forty six percent. Um. Okay, let, 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 let the palettes are acclimatised. I've got like, the chocolate. I've got little vanilla notes off that. Very rich, very robust. That's better on there. It's so fruity. Oh my god, it's so fruity. This is why I personally prefer Saint Lucia over Barbados because. All the rums and the Barbados, and I'm only really focusing on two. I'm not counting plantation in this. I'm counting on the two, the Dorleys and uh, the Mount Gay. Um, they are my typical kind of Barbados. They're very clinical, very uh, kind of sometimes whiskey-esque, whereas this is just juicy, delicious, quiet. Again, possibly not a session rum, possibly not a rum that I would want to drink all night. It's probably too robust for me to be drinking it all night. It's got that feistiness to it. As a, and that comes from what I think is the ABV. I think it is a lot stronger. It tastes a lot stronger than what it actually is. There's a little prickle of spice to it. But I would, I would say it's that fruity... Can I narrow it down? I, it's not tropical fruit. I, I want to go raisins. I want to go like proper. If you've had a lot of proper rum and raisin ice cream where those raisins are plump because they've soaked in a lot of alcohol, is that is that kind of vibe? Um, maybe maybe like for subtle direction towards glacé cherries, that sort of thing, that sort of dried fruit. 
Uh, not juicy cherries. I don't get tropical fruit at all off it, but the, the vanilla is, is there. Uh, so what do they say? Uh, a warm palate offers, okay, grilled tropical fruit, candied walnuts, okay. Rounded with soft spices, okay, I said that, and uh, persists through a long, wonderful finish. Um, interesting. So they're, they're telling me, I get the opposite to what they're actually telling me. I can't relate that to tropical fruit. I put pineapple, guava, coconut. I can't relate that to that. I relate it to the, the, the sort of dried fruits, if you like, the, the sort of the, the raisins, the, that sort of the plums, cherry. I, I kind of do relate it to that more. I'll tell you what I have done, though, because this was a good one. Uh, Master of Malt. I kind of buy all my alcohol through Master of Malt. Um, so... What Master of Malt? Master of Malt have got a kind of a different tasting notes. And this is what I'm actually more in line with. They've put rich dark spices, 100% agree. Apricot jam. Now that they've said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, there is that sort of stone fruit vibe to it. Uh, golden syrup, toffee brittle, coffee and treacle uh, with the finish of plum and raisin. That is more descriptive to what I actually sense than what uh, chairman's own tasting notes are. Um, I totally agree with the plum and raisin on there. Totally. For me, that is an exceptional sipping rum. 40, 42 pounds. I would quite happily, let's, let's get rid of that. Let's put, I would quite happily have that as a sipper. The aftertaste is so long. Um, I would quite happily have that as a sipper. I'm not convinced I would have two or three in one night. I would have a nice one and enjoy it. It's an enjoyable one as opposed to a session one. Like I, I kind of like that. Ian Burrell, I kind of heard it off Ian Burrell first, a session rum. Um, but that for me is not a session rum. It's an enjoyable one-off um once a night end of the night hard days work kind of or oh, let's just sit down with that in a glass that's what that rum is cocktails yeah maybe sort of the rum fashion if you're going to add a bit of sugar to it um i genuinely wouldn't mix that with you you could do it's going to make some fantastic cocktails it's not a cocktail rum for me it is a sipping rum in its own right it is a great quality cheap let's be honest £42 for a great quality sipping rum is cheap as chips. Because when you look at the likes of four square meters, yes, we're talking 70, 80, 100 plus pounds a bottle. Um, am I saying that's better than four square? I don't really like, I'm not a huge four square ECS kind of fan. So yes, for me personally, but I'm saying that punches at that weight. That is, the ABV really got me. The ABV, I'm, I'm, I blind, I swear blind, blind tasting, I swear that would be 44, 46%. That really does punch up there. That is a great, great example. And to go back to that video, um, the, tw the rums you should like be checking out in 2023. It's like, it's like, how? How can that, an example of Chairman's Reserve, all right, there's spice was in there, but how can Chairman's Reserve not get mentioned more than what it does? Is it because you guys don't drink enough? Don't is it Chairman's Reserve is not on your radar? I, I don't know. I want to understand why Chairman's Reserve is not on, is not more popular and talked about than what it is because that is absolutely stunning. That is wow. That is that is a nightcap for me. That's that's amazing. Love it. Not, not. I wouldn't say the best sipping rum I've got, but price point, that is next level. That is really good. Cheers.